Another type of reaction is the double replacement reaction. This occurs between ionic compounds. So your dead giveaway, your visual clue that you have a double replacement reaction is that these will be ionic compounds. Uh, the easiest way to look at this is another kind of dance floor analogy. Uh, what happens in a double replacement reaction is switching partners. So if you want to look at it this way, um, what we've got is a positive ion and a positive ion here. We've got a negative ion here and a negative ion here. The positive of one gets together with the negative of the other and the positive of the first gets together with the, excuse me, the positive of the second gets together with the negative of the first. So what you wind up with is a D and CB. Two different combinations, two different compounds. Again, the positive together with the negative, and the positive got together with a negative. You won't see a positive and a positive get together. The two metals of the ionic compounds won't get together because uh, like charges repel. Keep that in mind. So uh, A will not combine with C. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. These are very, uh, very straightforward. Um, we've got lead to chloride reacting with lithium sulfate. So what happens is the positive gets together with the negative, and the positive gets together with the negative. So. Again, the positive gets together with the negative, and the positive gets together with the negative. It's probably easiest to name these first and then write the formulas, because that'll keep you uh, thinking about ionic formula writing. We'd still have to follow those rules. So with this, I would get lead to sulfate. So lead to sulfate, little sidebar here, PB2 plus SO4 2 minus. Uh, that adds up to zero already, so it's just one of each. I get PbSO4 lead to sulfate. And the other compound is lithium chloride. So we've got Li plus one, Cl minus. So that's lithium chloride, because I just need one and one to add up to zero. Uh, one and a po uh, positive one and a negative one. Uh, I should still balance this. Let me get this out of the way to do some balancing here. Uh, I had two lithiums on this side, so I'm going to have two lithiums on this side. So I put a two out in front of that. Uh, I had two chlorines. That two also takes care of that. Uh, one lead, one lead, one sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygens, four oxygens, and oxygens, and I'm done. So really, it's just a matter of switching partners. So in this case, zinc connects with the nitrate. Silver connects with the bromide. I get zinc nitrate. Zinc is a positive 2. Zn2 plus nitrate NO3 minus 1. So I'm going to need two of these to add up to zero, and I get 
zinc nitrate, and silver bromide. These each have a positive one and a negative one charge respectively, so I get that, and all I have to do is balance at this point. Uh, two nitrogens, two nitrogens covers that, two bromines covers there, and I'm good. The last one, this, uh, this ion here, IO3, is the iodate ion. Uh, I dated her in high school. Bad jokes even on the video. Um, but that's the iodate ion, just like you know, NO3 is the nitrate ion. So what happens is the positive potassium peels off of there and is combined with the chloride ion. The barium connects with the iodate ion, and we get barium iodate, Ba. IO3, oops, no negative, but I do need two of them because it's a negative one, and then of course KCl potassium chloride. Uh, as far as balancing goes, uh, let's see here, I need a two out in front of this, and a two out in front of this, and that does it, and I'm done. Uh, so, again, switching partners, pretty straightforward. These reactions don't always occur, but we don't look at the activity series to decide. Uh, the activity series is strictly for single replacement reactions. Double replacement reactions, we'll look at solubility rules, but I think we'll do that after uh, we get back right before finals. Uh, also, we'll take a look at net ionic reactions and spectator ions after the break when we get back from, uh, get back, right before finals. So when we get back from break, along with solubility rules. Solubility rules are what govern whether a double replacement reaction will occur. Uh, we're not, again, we're not going to worry about that until we get back from break. So whenever you see a double replacement reaction, you can assume they all occur until we get to talking about why they don't occur.